Good morning everyone and welcome to Monday's assembly. What a beautiful weekend we had. Such sunshine, doesn't it make you feel a little bit better in yourself when a, the sun is shining and you're able to get out and have a little bit of a play, have a nice walk. Certainly I had two great big walks on Saturday and Sunday and that's all in aid of cancer research. We're all walking our 10,000 steps a day for March and I know there's lots and lots of staff and boys that are involved in that. Chelsea was telling me earlier that she set Lewis a target up 5,000 steps and he managed that exceptionally well and also managed the challenge of the biggest hill in Brighouse, Elland Hill. So well done to Lewis. Last week, or might be the week before, I set you a challenge about quotes and I was really, really pleased with Hockney and Lowry who managed to get loads and loads of quotes and I've, no, I've seen all those um, advertised and promoted on walls in Lowry so well done to you boys and that bubble will earn themselves a prize and Holly will be in touch to see what you guys would like for that. So I wanted to talk to you a little bit about quotes and what exactly they are to me very very important. I love I love a good quote and I try to think about my life when I'm thinking about these, these things. And I want to just share a little bit on Thomas Edison. Okay? Thomas Edison. Let me show you that one. And Thomas Edison was famous for something very, very important. And it's something that's very important today. Um, so I'd like you to try and find out a bit of information about him and get that information to me. And that's, that's today's challenge. But I wanted to talk to you about what they call failure. Okay, so what is failure? Now I see that I see failure as a learning opportunity. So if I want to try something new, or if I want to get better at something, sometimes it won't go to plan. Sometimes I might get it wrong. Sometimes I might need to try and try and try again. And sometimes I might need to seek support. So I'd like to tell you a little bit about Thomas Edison, about his viewpoint. And he said, this was his quote, he said, Many of life's failures are people who did not realise how close they were to success when they actually gave up. Chances are you may have heard of Edison in relation to overcome failure. He was a master of trial and error. Someone who wasn't afraid to make lots of mistakes. Make lots of mistakes in order to succeed. When asked about the many thousands of failures he had when trying to create the light bulb, he famously said, I have not failed. I've just found 10,000 ways that just don't work. I think it's a really, really positive way of looking at things. So if you want to learn something new, if you want to get better at something, be really, really positive. And every time you get it a little bit wrong, that's okay. That's an opportunity for learning and you will most definitely get better and better the more that you practice and the more that you seek help. So I think Thomas Edison was a fantastic inventor, but he also had a really good way and a positive approach to life. Okay, I met with Mrs. Wilshaw last week and we had a walk around the playground getting our 10,000 steps in and she, as usual, gave me a little bit of homework, which I've done over the weekend, but I also started reading this book. So it's Great Expectations. Can you tell me who the original author was of the Great, of great Expectations? This is a comic classic version of Great Expectations. Um, so if you can tell me who the author was, there'll be a little bit prize for that learning group or that bubble. But I started it on well, yesterday, I think, and I've got about, about a third way through. If you get a chance, I know it's on people's book reading list. Have a good read, because I think it's a great book. Okay, what have we got next? Right, I'm going to move on to certificates. So students, student of the week in Hockney, went to Billy Joe for a consistently great attitude in education and in-house 
for supporting the other boys with social progress and for stepping up and doing extra feeds on the farm. And Billy also joined us on a socially distanced walk around the playground last week and he was talking to me quite passionately and enthusiastically about his work with some of the boys in house as he's trying to help them move towards silver level. He was really, really positive about their efforts. But also, Billy, a big thank you to you. Um, also, Joe caught up with us and he was talking about his project for Platinum. Um, and I think he's going to be looking at some safer internet um, work and programmes for you boys to be involved in. Student of the Week in Roundtree went to Lucas for using his support well, finding ways to deal with issues appropriately and producing work to a really high standard. Well done, Lucas. In Sheeran, the award went to Alex. Alex has worked hard throughout the week, especially in his phonics. He is continually working hard on expressing himself and speaking to staff when he needs further support. So well done to Alex. In Priestley, the award went to Lavelle for some great dedication to his graffiti art project. And I know also Lavelle, you're really buying to love of reading. Well done, as is Jacob. In Hardridge, the award went to Ben for a fantastic week the great attitude in class and some lovely work produced in maths, phonics and topic. Well done to Ben. In Adams, the award went to JK. Great and pleasing to see. For completing all the work set for him with a good effort and socialising well within his bubble. Well done to JK. In Nightingale, the award went to Jack. For an excellent start in Nightingale. Well done to Jack. In Clancy, it was also great to see the award went to Tyler. Tyler has engaged well in literary lessons and in maths lessons too. Well done to Tyler. In Whitaker, the award went to Charlie for showing maturity within his class in a difficult situation. Well done to Charlie. And in Bess, the award went to Sibby. Sibby has worked very hard this week, both educationally and on his emotional well-being. The amount of work he's been able to complete is astounding, so well done to Sibby. In Boothroyd, it's also pleasing to see the award went to Faisal for having an excellent week and engaging well with set activities. Well done, Faisal. So House of the Week. This House of the Week has been great. The students are really motivated on improving their well-being in relation to being healthy, exercising daily and purchasing the ingredients to make healthy meals. This is contributing to their life skills and in preparation for adulthood. So the award this week went to Newton House. Well done to the boys and staff in there. And all you boys earn yourself 10 learning tokens and um, there'll be prizes later on too. Okay, I'm going to pause for the moment and we're going to fly over to Magic Allen. See you soon. Good morning everyone and welcome to Mrs Wilshaw's Word of the Week. The Grasshopper Word of the Week this week is Rucksack. A rucksack is a bag with straps that go over your shoulders so that you can carry things on your back, for example, when you are walking or climbing. For example, Alfie carried his sports gear in his rucksack. The Shinobi Word of the Week this week is Accumulate. When you accumulate things, or when they accumulate, they collect or are gathered over a period of time. For example, Jacob had accumulated lots of learning tokens. Grasshoppers, can you match these words to the definitions? Shinobi ninjas, can you match these meanings to the definitions? That's all for this week. See you next week on Mrs Wilshaw's Word of the Week. Morning. Everybody knows Sonia. So, time for a little card magic. We've got a single playing card, red back, nine of clubs. I'll ask Sonia to check the card, make sure 
she's okay with it, there's no cuts, no marks, no tears. It's got the right number of clubs on it. So, we take the card and put the card in to the little sleeve. The card's got the same red back and it's got the clubs on it. If we slide that card across, you can clearly see it's the nine of clubs and it's the same red back. If we now do a little magic cut <coughs> and we'll take the middle of the card away. Look at Sonia's face! <laughs> still the same red back, still the same red card, the nine of clubs that's been that's it. <laughs> if we slide that card back and a little click of the fingers, wow. all of the card suddenly <laughs> becomes all. It's on your speechless now. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. But we're not done. Let's have a normal pack of cards. As you can see, they're not in any particular order, if you would like to take them. You can shuffle them, you can cut them. Yeah? So, what we do now, three of spades, happy with? Yeah. Cool. Take your three of spades and put it in the middle of the pack. Take your top card. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That's your moment of magic. Thank, Thank you. you. Good morning. I hope you've all had another good week and another good weekend. We're going to be looking at a little bit more guitar today, and we're going to be looking at a little bit of a chord progression. Now, this is a really popular chord progression in a lot of sort of modern music, from Billie Eilish to Ed Sheeran, and it's just four chords, and four that we've already looked at before as well. So the first chord that we're going to look at is a G chord. Now if you don't remember how to play this, you're just going to take your second finger, you're going to put it on the third fret on your E string. Your first finger is going to go on the second fret on your A string. And when I play a G chord, I like to put my third finger on the third fret on the B string, and my little finger on the third fret on our high E string. The next chord we're going to look at is an E minor. Now in this chord progression, one of the great things that we can do is we can leave our third finger and our little finger in exactly the same place. We can leave them on that third fret on our B string and our E string. So all we have to do is take our, our second finger and our first finger and put them on the second fret on our A string and the second fret on our D string like this. So it sounds a little bit like this. And the third chord we're going to look at is called the C at 9. All we're going to do for that, similar to a G chord, but we're just going to shift our fingers over to the A and D string. So our second finger is going to be on the third fret on the A string, and our first finger is going to be on the second fret on the D string. And C add 9 just sounds like this. And the last chord we're going to have a look at is called a D suspended fourth, which sounds complicated, but it's not. All we're doing is taking our second finger, popping it on the, third, on the second fret, on our G string. And we're not going to play all our strings with this chord, we're just going to play those top four strings like this. Now, once you've got all four of these chords sort of down and you've had a little mess around with them, just try and play them in whatever order you want. And it doesn't matter what order you play them in, it'll always sound great. And if you're looking up some songs, you'll probably see a lot of them in there. Right, have a good week, and I'll see you all next time. Thank you very much, Miss Wilshaw for Word of the Week, Magic Allen and to Matt for some great knowledge and experience around the playing the guitar. Um, great to see Mr. Allen all dressed from toe to foot in his magic gear. Looking forward to next week's magic trick. Okay, before we finish, we're just celebrating one birthday this week and it's Sue Bing's. Um, so if you see Sue this week, wish her a happy birthday and 
Oh, there's two. The red bucket. So I'm going to draw out five tickets. First one, Owen Evans. James Manning. Alfie Kirby. Joe Murphy. And Billy Joe Cook. And you will all have prizes waiting for you in the reception by the close of this week. Enjoy. So don't forget this week's message. This week's message is it's a real strength just to have a go. Learn from experience and you'll become very, very successful in whatever you want to do. Look forward to seeing you on our walks around the playground. Do take care and have a really good week.